Uh, next up, we have Dr. Tajmilur Rahman from Gannon University, the talk titled, as you see on the screen, Teaching and Learning Cybersecurity Awareness with Gamification in Smaller Universities and Colleges. All right, so welcome everyone, and um, uh, thank you, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about the research that we have done on um, uh, understanding how gamification, uh, applying gamification, uh, helps improving the engagement of students in the classroom and uh, how it improves the uh, learning efficiencies, um, especially for uh, teaching cybersecurity awareness. Um, to our students in the um, university level. So first of all, uh, the security. Security is something uh, came with us. Uh, it began uh, since the very early days of our agricultural era, right after the um, hunting era, the moment we started cultivating products, domesticating cows, goats, sheep, donkeys, and all those stuffs. That's the first moment we realized that we need to keep this thing secured because other people were stealing them, right? And then that way we kept improving our security to protect our assets in our houses, right? To protect ourselves in our houses. And over the period of time, we developed locks like Lock, we see the ancient Assyrian lock. So that's the beginning. So we lock our doors, lock our drawers, our chests, our, you know, cabins, and uh, we lock everything to keep things protected, to keep our food protected, precious jewelries, uh, expensive stuff protected, right? Now, today, the expensive stuff is the most expensive and most precious thing is data information. Now, we don't care about locking our door much. I sometimes forget locking my garage door. <laughs> Even I sometimes forget to lock my front door, and I sleep overnight in the morning, I see, aha, last night I forgot, I forgot, forgot to lock my front door. But that doesn't matter. Thieves can steal what they can steal from my house, right? But if they can, breach the data, if somehow they can hack into my bank account, whatever money I have, they may steal it, right? Maybe I'm not their target, but the people who have billions of billions of money in their account, they're the target, right? Now, that is the most precious thing, the data, right? Now, the hundreds of thousands of events, the data breaching, data stealing events happening all around. The war going on, data, cyber war, cyber crime, these things we are hearing a lot these days. And these, uh, this is present and this is future, right? So we need to be more aware of the cybersecurity thing. We need to prepare our next generation uh, about the cybersecurity. We need to teach them better and we need to make sure we are preparing to uh, fight against the the cyber criminals in the cyber world, right? And uh, the demand, as we see in the picture, hundreds of thousands of job openings currently all over the world in this cyber market, right? 2.7 billion, right? That's the uh, uh, global shortage of cyber professionals these days. Now we need to fill that gap. And to do that, we need to produce uh, our future generation, we need to produce cyber professionals from our schools. So we teach cybersecurity, but we need, it to, we need to make sure how strongly we are teaching it, uh, how effectively we are teaching it. To, to do that, we have, what we have done in this study is we applied gamification uh, to assess the impact of, uh, impact of the game elements, how it's 
um, affecting how it's how it's uh, is it improving or uh, it's not improving how much it is improving the engagement how they are liking it the students how they are enjoying it so um, uh, in in the cybersecurity classrooms especially uh, focused we focused on um, cybersecurity social engineering awareness and um, the common cybersecurity attacks to teach them. And uh, for the game tool, we uh, chose here um, a, a premium Kahoot. So we chose Kahoot. We, uh, we applied uh, the game elements uh, from Kahoot um, to uh, apply this in our classroom. Now, Kahoot, it's um, free. We, 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 we could avail it um, uh, at low cost, and um, so it's uh, easy to use. It's affordable. Um, and uh, for especially for small colleges and small universities where we don't have uh, big setups to you know, um, instrument or illustrate the um, cyber attacks or um, uh, different practices, um, to, to give a better hands-on experience or to imitate the situation for the students in the classroom. Uh, um, uh, applying gamification, uh, applying game elements like uh, Kahoot and, and there are um, so many other uh, uh, gaming tools that we could apply here. Now, applying Kahoot, how did we do that? So we started this research with the research questions that we have here. So. Um, the first question is, what is the impact of gamification right, on students' learning of cybersecurity awareness? So the impact, we wanted to understand the impact of the, uh, the gamification. And then we wanted to understand the game elements, which one or which elements performing, uh, how the game elements are performing in this, uh, 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 in this game, gamification approach. And then what aspect of gamification interests students the most, right? how they take it. Do they want to? Uh, do they take it okay to understand uh, the, the the subject matter better, or uh, the, it's competitive? It helps. Uh, so, from which aspect gamification helped the students better? So that's the thing we wanted to understand. We covered these things in uh, these research questions that drove our research here. The methodology of this study, at a glance, we see here in this uh, in this slide. Uh, so we started with the, the course design. So we designed uh, the course material um, in such a way it focuses on the social engineering uh, cyber attacks. And at the same time, they fit with the, uh, the Bloom's taxonomy levels. Uh, we targeted level one, two, three, four, uh, these four levels. We had uh, two questions from level three, one from level two, one from level one, and one uh, of, uh, pointing to uh, level four. And the timeline here we see uh, pretty much we, uh, a, a common scenario where we take the pre-test survey, we did a post-test survey, and then in the middle we applied our uh, gamification method. So the results were um, impress um, uh, impressive here. Overall, we see the ratings um, uh, in the figure, we see the considerably improved, a, a considerable amount of improvement we could absorb here. So, uh, in the pre-test survey, we found that most of the students didn't have any idea, any knowledge about the uh, the cyber attack, the social engineering stuff, and through the gamification approach, uh, after I mean, when we took the uh, post-survey, we found that okay, um, a big improvement in their um, social engineering, so um, um, uh, social engineering in general. So here we found an improvement. The response, if we look at the response in details, so the specific improvements, if you see the specific uh, topics like uh, fishing, the, 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 the subject matter that fo focusing on fishing, spear phishing, vishing, okay, uh, smishing or baiting or something like that. So these were um, the specific uh, focused areas. And where there we see, uh, so, so most of the students, they had very little or no knowledge at the beginning, and then um, towards the end, they, um, they found it pretty much uh, interesting, and they, they found that they have learned a lot. For example, in the process, we see uh, in fishing, 
uh, initially we had 20% of them didn't have any knowledge on that, but 36% of them, they uh, strongly agreed that they um, have uh, learned. Um, the significance of this result is, uh, you can see in this, um, in this slide here, uh, overall it was significant. Um, well, with the p-value, you can see about 0.0004, and the specific, um, uh, specific uh, uh, elements, they were also, they all were uh, significant. Um, so the result wa was pretty much significant. And uh, so we found that gamification applying uh, the gamification through Kahoot was pretty much uh, uh, impactful. And uh, how much they liked it, how much uh, participant, uh, participants they agreed with this process or how much they disagreed with this process. We had that survey and where we have found that 47.4%, 47, 47 I mean, majority of them, they agreed and, uh, and, and, and strongly agreed, but very uh, small percentage, um, a very small percentage was on the uh, negative side. Here's 2.6%. Uh, neither agreed or not disagreed. Uh, pointing to our third research question, which was about the, um, uh, okay, so our second research question was, which game elements were performing, how, how the game elements were performing. Here in the first figure, we see the leaderboard. So four game elements we used in this, uh, we, uh, we, we stayed focused on. Leaderboard, instant reward, the badges, and the time. And here we see um, the most, preferred one from the participants were uh, the leaderboard, okay? And uh, then uh, the, the time was the, the least one, actually, because uh, in Kahoot, the questions answers, they are pretty fast. And um, we found that most of the students, most of the participants, they didn't, they, they, they had a complaint about the timing. Um, but, but the leaderboard gaming game element uh, where uh, we found that that's more effective. And on the, on the other side, the uh, aspects of gamification, um, we see the motivation, the understanding, the purpose of the concept. Um, that was that was really um, interesting for the students, and uh, so that survey was uh, uh, was developed with some open-ended questions like. Uh, like gamification uh, motivated you to learn more about cybersecurity or uh, how do you rank? Um, what do you think about learning? Did I, um, I learn better using gamification? So these kind of open-ended questions. And from those questions, uh, we developed the aspects and we found that the understanding the purpose of the concept uh, was the most uh, popular one. And in uh, overall, uh, again, understanding uh, that aspect was good. The things that students or participants liked, uh, most of them saying that, okay, it's a, it's a modern technique, we liked it. Um, it they felt competitive. Well, uh, they found it an interesting application which gives them, um, you know, uh, to, uh, to beat others, the opponents, to gain more scores. A uh, few things they didn't like, one of them, like I said, uh, there are students who uh, who know the answers, but who know many of the answers, but they are failing because of they're not they're not able to make a high score because of the timing issue. They know the answer, but still they're not getting the high score, so they get frustrated. Future work: We'll try to uh, make this study more robust. The sample size was 38 students, so in the future we'll try to make it uh, more robust and. Um, We'll try to uh, 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 focus on more other um, uh, parts of more other uh, aspects of uh, cybersecurity learning. That was all for today for me. Um, thank you very much for listening. If you have any question. Yeah, we have roughly three minutes for questions, and then again, if uh, Dr. Rahman, if you don't mind repeating the questions for the recording. Sure, no problem. Um, I mean, uh, uh, 
from my experience, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to go for too easy or too hard. I always prefer to uh, stay somewhere in the middle. Um, I have seen uh, um, some tough personalities who believe that no, I should stay on the tough side so everyone can push themselves the most and uh, you know exceed a certain level. But I prefer um, to stay somewhere in between so that. You know, satisfaction is something really important for students. Uh, if a student doesn't feel that uh, he or she is satisfied with what, what, what uh, they're learning or in the classroom or uh, with their performance, okay, they may become more demotivated. Okay, so that's the thing I don't like because if they are demotivated, it's even worse for them, right? So that's why I try to stay somewhere in the middle. Now, the, the students who are, uh, you know, uh, by natural, uh, more expert and meritorious, well, they will get A plus or more than A plus, even if they get more than A plus, well, they still stay at A plus, right? I'm not, I'm not creating a new grade for them. But uh, still, I can judge the rest, right, how they're doing. So I would prefer to stay somewhere in the middle. Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, yeah, I think it was, I need to get back to my paper, but there was a mix of uh, 22 male and 16 female. Yes, 22 male and 16 female um, participants we had, yeah, yeah. But in a future study, we uh, definitely want to um, collaborate with multiple classrooms. Um, if possible, from multiple universities or multiple schools, yeah, to see the result. Yeah. 